Right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. Today we're looking at part 15 of 43 year old Danielle and her 28 year old Tunisian husband Muhammad. So last time out we looked at the first part of the season finale tell all episode. The pair had previously agreed to get a divorce and go their separate ways but Danielle refused to give up and once again tried to win Muhammad back by threatening to turn up to his house in Miami uninvited. When he rejected her, she turned up anyway, instead hurling abuse and physical objects at him before being escorted away by the police. So during the first part of the tell-all that followed, Danielle handed Muhammad a piece of paper which claimed to be a refiled annulment, which once again threatened to result in Muhammad being deported from the country. Muhammad, however, clearly believes that his reasons for entering and leaving his relationship with Danielle are legitimate, bringing up not only the fact that she lied to him about her financial situation, but also revealing the fact that she has a secret criminal past. At the end of part one, Muhammad denied ever being intimate with Louisa or Gracie and denied rumors that he's secretly gay. Following the discussions around Muhammad's intimacy with other people, the host, Sean Robinson, then moved the conversation onto his intimacy with Danielle. This is something that's barely been spoken about in the saga so far, and you'd think that that was partly because their private life was rather uneventful and unremarkable, but it turns out that they've been keeping quite a spectacular secret. To begin to uncover the truth, Sean started off by asking about their wedding. Although Muhammad said that he was unable to kiss Danielle during their wedding because it was Ramadan, he did actually admit that they had kissed and even slept together beforehand. So following on from that, Sean then asked Muhammad what things were like in the bedroom once they began life as a married couple. Was there any intimacy after the wedding at all? After the wedding? Yes. There was, but we started facing a problem. I don't want to say like, this is very private. Instead of taking care of that problem, she was like fighting with me over it. This is something that no man in the world can accept that. I think he's kind of protecting Danielle here by not saying what the problem was exactly, but it sounds like whatever it was, rather than trying to fix the problem, she would just argue that he should sleep with her anyway. This is a stone that obviously doesn't go unturned and we'll get to those details shortly. But to continue to make it clear that she was still very much the cause of their intimacy problems, he went on to reveal just how sinister her entitlement was. And then, and then she was, like, be like sitting on the floor, crying, screaming in front of her teenagers. I want my sex tonight. If you don't give me my sex tonight, I will, I will, I will call the immigration. I will get you deported. Now that is arguably worse than anything we've seen of Danielle so far. To manipulate someone in such a way that they're essentially coerced into sleeping with you, it pretty much takes consent out of the equation. And what was equally despicable was the reaction of everyone else in the studio. They did a similar thing in part one where Danielle pulled out the annulment. It was like they were cheering on her efforts to get him deported. I hate to bring up the whole if the genders were reversed argument because obviously it's a very complex issue, but if Rose or Kyori had gone on to marry Big Ed and they sat there in a tell-all and basically said that Ed demands sex, and threatens to get them deported if they don't give in to his demands. There is no way that the studio would be sat there laughing, wooing and cheering him on. And again, every time something comes out about how Daniela and Muhammad treated each other during their relationship, I feel even worse for her daughters. On top of everything that they had to put up with during this whole dysfunctional toxic mess, the fact that they had to witness on a frequent basis in their own home, their mother in tears demanding sex from her unwilling partner, is awful. And when Sean asked Danielle to comment on what Muhammad had just said, rather than denying it or addressing any of her degenerate behavior, she instead just openly admitted what was stopping him from wanting to sleep with her in the first place. He has told people that I smell and I do. peed on him. I cannot believe that she just freely volunteered that information. Why would you admit those things on national TV like that? Why did we need to know that? And Muhammad didn't even hesitate after she said that she smells. He was just like, yeah, you do. And so based on what he was saying earlier, rather than trying to improve on how much she smells, she was arguing with him over it and basically saying that he should want to sleep with her anyway. What is wrong with this woman? She has some stuff that I don't like, I, I okay, complain about. You know what, I don't even, I don't even wanna know. Then, I don't, I then, don't, then, yes, that, then, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for. If you're yes. asking me like, why yes. I'm not having sex with her, then you put it uh, out there, I, I have think, to explain it. You know, all right, so. I have explained it. 
This was quite weird from Sean, I think, because Muhammad was getting quite a lot of grief from everyone in the room for not being intimate with Danielle. And everyone was using that to accuse him of never being interested in her. But when he finally got the chance to explain that there was a valid reason he didn't want to sleep with her, Sean just completely shut him down. I get that she was probably protecting Danielle herself there, but she didn't give Muhammad a fair chance to defend himself. Although, even after Sean put an end to that conversation, Danielle then decided to pipe up and volunteer even more information about her and Muhammad's private life. We didn't have sex until September. Oh, and so we're not married when? when? Married? July. July? Get out of here. Wow. Yes. I mean, there's some red flags. I wouldn't right? so, expect, yeah. Oh, yes, I wouldn't wait that I'm long. Of course I'm not going to have sex with someone like It's your wife. Daniel. My Muhammad. wife. We had sex before we got wife. married and when, we were, when I seen you in Doha. So what's the difference? It's so weird how everyone's so strongly on Danielle's side here. I mean, I get why a lot of them might have been on her side coming into the tell-all. Like, at the start of the saga, I was really quite critical of Muhammad. I mean, on the face of it, you've got a vulnerable woman and a man who most likely used her for a green card. But even if you completely ignore all of Muhammad's efforts to give the marriage a shot, all of the abuse, all of Danielle's lies about her finances and her criminal record, and the insane saga of her stalking him to Miami and harassing and assaulting him there, after they had made peace and agreed to go their separate ways. Even if you completely ignore all of that, or you just haven't seen it yet, or you still think that he's worse than her and you come into the tell -all on her side. How you can sit there and say that no matter how disgusting or revolting he finds the idea of sleeping with her, no matter how unhygienic it would be or the potential knock-on health consequences for him, he should absolutely have slept with her anyway just because she's his wife, as if that means that any right to say no just goes out the window is utterly perplexing. Again, if Rose had married Ed and had been like, we aren't intimate, he's extremely unhygienic and smells down there, I don't want to go near it. Do you think any of the castmates would be sitting there going, it's your husband, you slept with him in the Philippines, what's the difference? You already knew that about him, so you should have slept with him anyway. Of course not, it wouldn't make any sense, and those arguments would be equally as despicable. Because you do not know that nobody will have sex with someone like you. <gasps> This is so she sad. has a problem that she needs to see a doctor before she has sex with someone. Right, but you knew that. I know, and when I, you got I, was, married. I was I was working with her on that. I asked her to to go and see a doctor. Muhammad, that was so what? mean. I genuinely don't know what they expected him to do differently. The way he worded it was brutal, and he definitely could have said it in a nicer way. But he's just saying like. It's not just me, no person should have to put up with this. He's even saying he tried to work with her on the problem, she just wasn't having it. Although I obviously think that they're in the wrong, I do to an extent understand why they might be inclined to defend Danielle here. Like this must undeniably be an absolutely mortifying thing to have a room full of people and inevitably the whole nation talking about. Obviously women aren't necessarily built to smell like roses down there, so I'm sure a lot of women watching and a lot of the women in the tell-all can relate to perhaps feelings of insecurity around it and can easily empathize with how it would feel to have someone say this about you publicly. So perhaps naturally, defending Danielle might be quite instinctive, but I think it's hard for us to properly judge Muhammad here because we don't actually know how bad it is. Like we don't know if we're talking about a natural human odor that she can't necessarily fix, in which case he's either very out of touch with the realities of the human body or he is using it as an excuse to just not sleep with her. Or if we're talking about severe hygiene issues or perhaps even a medical condition, in which case he's more than justified in talking about it because first of all, she brought it up, but secondly, it justifies him not sleeping with her. I think given we couldn't possibly know, it's pretty reasonable to side with Muhammad here. At the end of the day, if you don't want to have sex with someone, for whatever reason, you don't have to. And you should never even have to justify your decision. I don't want to is enough by itself. Muhammad. Of course it's so mean. Yeah, you don't say then that to a woman. Have for her? I would say it to a woman. Husband, I would what say it to a woman. What respect, what respect do you have That's as so a husband? That's so damn mean, like seriously. Like, rewind back you to that date. You are trying to make me look like a no, bad No, you are making yourself look like it. I'm not. Yes, you're talking bad about this woman. You made her walk away. Because you didn't consummate your marriage because you didn't love her. Yeah, and that's where they lose me, I think. You didn't consummate your marriage because you didn't love her. I don't even doubt that he's wrong. I know some of you will, and that's fine too. 
But I don't think Muhammad ever truly loved Danielle. But regardless, he's literally giving the reason he didn't consummate the marriage and it had nothing to do with whether he loved her or not. If they want to suggest that he's blowing it out of proportion and just using it as an excuse for not sleeping with her, then that's a fair argument. But to suggest that being in a relationship or being in love with someone means that you should have to put up with stuff that makes you genuinely uncomfortable and do things that you really don't want to do is such a dangerous road to go down. How so long time mean. I've been here sitting quiet without saying any word and you keep saying, how can you just do you that for this, this woman? Like and I have my own reason why I'm not having sex with her. I've been quiet, I didn't want to say that, but you kept going on and on, trying to make me say it. Okay, when I say it, you don't like it. Again, I think it was perhaps slightly harsh of him to say that no one will ever have sex with her. And I think it's another example of Muhammad's slight emotional immaturity, but I don't think the point he's making is entirely unfair, is it? They were all piling up on him being like, why didn't you sleep with her? That's such a red flag. It shows that you didn't love her and were just using her for a green card. He didn't even outright say what the problem was to begin with. Danielle was the one who said it was to do with the smell. He said there was a reason, but didn't want to go into details. So without a clear excuse, everyone thought he was the bad guy. But then after Danielle reveals what the very legitimate reason was and he confirms it, he's still the bad guy. And then out of absolutely nowhere, a fight breaks out and Danielle isn't even involved. You put me like with drunk people trying to make me look bad. <laughs> Who's drunk? You are drunk. I think you're getting your messed up, you know. You don't say drunk people. What drunk people? It's the truth. You are drunk. There is no drunk the people bar. here, so get your Wait, you got okay. me? No, I didn't get you. Gentlemen? No, you don't get, get me. Do you want to get me for straight now? Devar? No, get your straight, you know. That is disrespectful. Devar. Do you want to see for what? Yeah. It's such a random fight to break out, isn't it? I haven't actually watched Devar and Melanie's story, so I don't actually know if there's a deeper reason why alcohol might be a touchy subject for them. And if so, I'm sure someone in the comment section will be able to enlighten us. But otherwise, I'm assuming it was just because tensions were high. And I don't really doubt that producers will have given them a few drinks beforehand to loosen their tongues a little bit. Still, I think it's funny how Devar took the most offense to the drunk people comment and tried saying no one was drunk, despite being this zoned out for the entire conversation leading up to it. And obviously, getting aggressive and threatening to start a fight isn't the best way to show that you're in control of yourself, is it? Devar, or what, or what are you gonna do? Devar, please help me out. You, what you wanna see what I can and, do? And yes, show me. Right now. You're shaking. Okay. Yes, show me. <laughs> Muhammad. You need to like relax Devar, and show me. Do you think I'm scared when Gentlemen. you're threatening really? like He could kick your ass. Shut the up. Okay, Gentlemen. try it. Really? Please. Yeah, try it. No, show no, 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 no. Show me what you can do. No, God. let's not. It's so embarrassing, isn't it? And the whole my boyfriend could kick your ass is such high school girl chat. Well, by this point, it seemed like it was Muhammad versus the world. And I think it was obvious that he was feeling it too. He had said enough to make his case. And I think he knew that whatever he said next would fall on deaf ears. It was clear that the cast members had made up their minds on him. So as the producers called a break to allow everyone to cool off, Muhammad decided to leave. But before they let him go, they caught up with him in the back rooms for one final word. I was trying to protect Daniel from saying that information for over two years now, over two years, until she said it by herself on camera. And then when I was like in the middle of the fire, everybody's attacking me from everywhere. I, I got so upset to the point that I felt I have to say something to stop these people. I know Muhammad's far from perfect, but the way he was treated on this tell-all was so ridiculously unfair. The fact that everyone was acting as if he owed Danielle sex in the first place was messed up enough as it is. But the fact that even after Danielle herself admitted what the problem was, everyone still ganged up on him as if he was obligated to sleep with her regardless was so depressing to watch. Today I feel like I just gave you like maybe 10 or 20% from the reasons that made me leave Danielle. And everybody has like so much can take. If you pass that limit, that person is gonna go like mad or upset or crazy or whatever you, you wanna say it. Ultimately, Muhammad decides to go. I'm not surprised he left. That was a battle he was never gonna win. The longer this whole ridiculous situation goes on, the worse I feel for Muhammad. If Danielle wanted to get the marriage annulled, she should have done it when they first split up. But to agree to get a divorce and go back on her word months later is just cruel. And the fact that she's doing it out of spite because he rejected her again just makes it so much worse. I've criticized Muhammad a lot over this saga, particularly at the start for using Danielle for a green card. But for me at least, after everything she's put him through, 
He really doesn't deserve this. I wish I could say that Mohammed found peace after this tell all because it's the end of the season. But unfortunately, this was just the start of a whole new chapter of drama for him. Next time out, we're going to be looking at the start of a brand new season where Danielle is going to be doing everything in her power to get Muhammad deported. This time, however, she's not interested in becoming friends or getting back together with him. This time, she's out for blood. So if you want to find out whether Muhammad stays in the country or whether the annulment forces him to go back to Tunisia, feel free to subscribe down below so you can catch all the updates as soon as I upload them. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.